Well here we are again. Let's create a small folding paper presentation bag with Affinity Designer. And you can do this on the iPad or the desktop. It's fairly easy to do and if you get lost though, that on my website you'll find the finished file that you can simply modify for your own needs. Now this is a very small bag and you can print it out using an A4 sheet of paper. Um, what could be simpler? And you'll see a finished example at the end of this little process. Now don't forget to subscribe. Please pause the video and tap subscribe. Spread the love. Now have you ever wondered how to make a small presentation paper bag? I know I have and that's what prompted this. This project will get you started. Um, practice your origami because the folding <laughs> is interesting. But it's a fantastic addition to your online sales options. If you can make your own paper bags, your little presentation bags, you can put your gifts in them and you can save yourself quite a bit of money by simply designing your own bags. Even if you send them off to a print shop, you'll still have them designed in the first place. Export the whole project when it's finished to a PDF file, CMYK, send it off to a printer. So, let's start. Open a new Affinity Designer document. Now what I've done is open a new document and, and choosing set up a preset. So you've got my presets there. Now I've typed in um, all the width and the height, the DPI, and you can see it there. The width is 436.5 and the height is 299.5 millimeters. There's no margin and no bleed on the actual document. That's all contained within the design of the document. And you can see that on the right hand side in the layout column there. And this is obviously for the desktop version of Affinity Designer. It looks slightly different in the iPad, but if you're using the iPad version, you'll see it there. Quite easy to do. Now, create a blank rectangle, the exact size. Make sure it's the exact size and the offsets are zero. Now the exact size, as I've just mentioned, is 436.5, 299.5 high. And that's a blank rectangle, meaning there's no fill and there's no stroke. Now, unfortunately, that's blocked out by the red arrow going across there, but that's where your stroke and fill is. And it's got a red line through them. There's no stroke and there's no fill. We just want that rectangle. It's the foundation. Now, prepare a second rectangle that goes on top of that. And by prepare, I mean what we've got to do now is set the stroke to 0.5 of a point and a bright red color. Set it to bright red and set its width to 0.5. Now, you do that before you create the next rectangle. And this is where you create it. Create the second rectangle, pull out the second rectangle and set its dimensions and position to 434.5 and 295.5 and its X is 0 0.1 and its Y offset is 2 millimeters. Now if you look at that, you'll see the left hand side, it's right on the edge, but there's 2 millimeters all around the rest of the document. That doesn't show over on the right hand side because when I did the screen grab um, I didn't have it selected. I wanted to show you it's the red line that goes around there. That's your outside edge. So virtually anything that goes over that will be trimmed off. And this is where we set it all up. Now I mentioned the trim size there. Anything that passes the red solid line will be trimmed. You can see that on the inset there. But the text itself is up in the top right hand corner of your document. Add your text reminder of the trim. Let's say you don't forget. Now when you've got a background pattern that goes over the whole document, you can take it out past that trim line and it doesn't matter because it's just the background pattern and it will be trimmed off to the exact size of the page. Now add some more reminder text. This is the full bleed text layers. Full bleed text layers. Extend your background design to this edge on all sides. That's full bleed. 
that goes with your trim size. It's well, pretty much the same thing, except the X size is 20 millimeters, and that's you can see where it says full bleed. It begins 20 20 millimeters in, not 20 centimeters, idiot. 20 millimeters. Okay, let's look at that in more detail. This is just adding the text layers at the moment. You can see the position and you can see the width and height of the box. Safe zone text. Now you know what safe zones are. The safe zone is where you keep your important content. That's your designs, your logo, your words. Remember this is a gift box or a gift, a, a gift bag. You don't want it covered in writing because no one will read it. You just want something like happy birthday or smiling face or Fred's cosmetics, something like that. Not in there, of course. This is just a reminder text again telling you the safe zone is coming up. Now, the safe zone one rectangle is a blue stroke. Set the stroke to blue and you can see it there. And its X is 30 millimeters and its Y is 60.5. And the size is there, 130 by 179.5. Too easy. Set that one there. Safe zone 2. Now I've trimmed the whole document a little bit and moved it to the right because that safe zone is actually in the middle of the document. You'll see this in a moment. Again, it's a blue stroke and that's where its X and Y coordinates are and its size, 55 by 200. Safe zone 3 rectangle, blue stroke again. This is on the right hand side. Now, a slight hesitation there, but never mind. <coughs> <laughs> Never mind, let's continue right along. We've got the safe zone 3 rectangle in, so let's continue on. Now all the safe zones are in place, and you can see them there in the diagram. They're the blue rectangles. The layers column is slowly filling up. Now the full bleed green line is in place, that's 20 millimeters in. You can see 20 millimeters in from the left hand edge and you can see that the X position in the transform part of the studio, just in case you can't see it on the small diagram, I put that inset there showing you a green line. Now there's a reason for that green line. That area left of that green line is the glue line, so it doesn't, nothing will be on that. That's where you glue the two edges together. And we'll see that in a moment. That's the glue flap text. So add the text, the glue part. Just another layer with the words and you can see the setting of it, the X and Y settings and the size of it. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just gluing part. Remember all text that you type in. Eventually you convert it to curves. You'll see in the columns over there in the layers panel all the text are curves. That way when you send it to the printer it doesn't matter um, what font you use because it's curves. So it's no longer actually a font. Now add the dotted line reminder text. Dotted line it's a bit difficult to read there. Dotted line equals the folding line. This is where you fold your document. You can see that last text reminder is the bottom part. So those bottom parts there, they just go there. And you can see when they're both selected, your X and Y of that of that um, rectangle. There's two separate rectangles there, but I've got them both selected. And if you do the same thing, then you can put them in the right position. Now, all reminder text is in place. Bottom parts, safe zone, full bleed, trim size, and 
dotted line equals folded line, folding line, and it's all the appropriate colour. Now we've got to add the vertical lines. Add a vertical folding line, there's one at 25 millimetres. Now I've got all the folding lines showing there, so just ignore that for the moment. There's one vertical line at 25 millimetres. It's a dotted folding line. Then we add another vertical line at 165 millimetres. And you can see them going into place there. There's another folding line at 197.5. There's another folding line at 230 millimetres. And vertical folding line at 370 millimetres. And a vertical folding line at 402.5 millimetres. Fairly straightforward, you can put those in. And you can see clearly up the top there that the folding lines are dotted lines 0.5 of a point in width and the stroke is in red colour, but there's no fill. So they're easy to put in. Now we add the horizontal folding lines. There's one at 35 millimetres. There's one at 212.5 millimetres. And there's one at 245 millimetres. These are all the folding lines to allow you to fold this little bag up. And because it's got a bottom to it, we add the angled folding, folding lines. Note the positions and angles. That first one there is 135. Note its X and Y position and its width. This is important to get those right. And the best way of describing it is to show you where they are like that and show you in the Transform Studio. There's the next one. Note the position and angles. 45 degrees. And it's X and Y position. And it's width. Note the position and angle of the next one. And lastly, we've got two. There's one there goes up and one comes down. They're the same as the other ones. So if you want to put them in individually, that's fine. If you want to do them as a little group like that, that's fine too. Of course, once you've got the document folded and you've done this a few times, you won't need to worry about those anymore. They'll be there just for your reference. But you can see they've created the little bottom flap that folds under the bottom of the the little paper packet. Now lastly the circles for the string handles. Note the position and size of this box. It's a little um, a little rectangle I've got at the top with one two three four five six seven eight little holes. That's where the holes for the handles go. The handles usually string or fancy plaited rope. You've all seen them I'm sure. Now finished. Your document should now look like this. Add your backgrounds, logos and promotional text in the areas set aside, that is, the safe zones. Um, put your background, of course, your background design goes across the whole thing, except to the edge where the glue edge is. You don't need to worry about putting anything over the glue edge. You can, but you'll just stick the other side of it to it anyway, and nobody will ever see it unless they pull it apart. There's a finished example. And you can see fairly clearly the glue line at the left hand side. And of course you can't see the fold lines and all the other text because that's hidden behind there. Fairly straightforward I think and I hope you enjoy making these. When you try and uh, construct your first couple of little packets by folding up your A4 sheet of paper. <laughs> You'll really wish you'd concentrated on your origami folding, but you can get it. It can be done. So thanks for watching, and please do subscribe. It helps me a lot, encourages me to keep going.